everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. It's time to start. I'm just going to go ahead and start a little bit early. Um, and we're going to look at some isopods to start out with. So, Pokesaurus, Crystal's Pets, Zeze Kingyo, Dr. Spud, Dylan's Mini Beasts, Primetime Gecko, all in the house already. Very nice. I'm going to switch it to live chat so that everybody can get in. We've already got a like, too. Let's take a look at some of these isopods, folks. See what we got. These are, of course, some of my zebra isopods, Armadillidium maculatum. And the T's knees is in, ha I don't know how to say that, Half a Lord, Camden Cochran, all in there. Nice to see you here. Welcome. Well, we got 16 people in the house. So I've got two enclosures of these zebra isopods. They're doing well. You can see in the top right, there's that spotted one. There's a couple of them that are like that, but most of them have the stripes. Oh, we've already got seven likes. That's nice. This live stream is getting underway a little faster than the last one. Nature Zone. I like turtles too. I haven't had turtles for a long time, but I like them a lot. Hey, Primetime Gecko. How's it going? Let's see. I'm going to um, switch in some different isopods now. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. Let's see, what kind of isopods should we look at now? How about some? Pennsylvania Angler in the house. Welcome. Let's look at some of these guys. See what we've got here. I'm going to change the angle of the camera just slightly. Hopefully that will help. And let's see. Cool. If beans were crustaceans, they would be isopods. Heard about the Bahadasaurus? Nope. Here's some, I have not heard of that one. There's some orange vigors. Rubber duckies, not yet, but I'm working on it as soon as I can get some. There's a whole bunch of baby orange vigors in here. I know that I've got big adults in there too. You can see some in the corner over here. But there's a ton of them in here. They just got watered today. So, it's like a margasaurus, but at the next bite, point forward. Crazy. Got to see a picture of that one. Oh, Primetime Gecko, congratulations. You've got um, babies in your isopod cultures. Awesome. Half a Lord says, I was on a trip to Brazil and found a few tiny isopods that have absolutely no pigmentation. They were everywhere. Cool. I wonder if they're uh, Trichorhinus species. Um, I don't know. It's possible. Let's see. They're all kind of hiding now. Yeah, wood lice is actually another term for terrestrial isopod. So, yeah. Indeed they are. I'm going to put this one away and let's look at another species. Let's see what we got now. Hmm. Oh, it's always fun to check on the peaches. See how they're doing. This is always fun because there's usually a ton of them right under here. So, yeah, the peaches are doing really well. Um, if I... If someone comes by who can um, get me to the bird, then yes, I will show you the bird. Um, I can't necessarily do it unless, uh, I mean, I can't just leave this room and, and get him, though. But if, if someone comes by, I will ask him, and then I can um, show you the bird. Let's see, what else we got we can look at? Um, oh, I'm going to show you the high yellows. The high yellows are fun right now. Um, there's a ton of babies in here, so you can't really tell that they're high yellow necessarily in all cases, but there's one of the high yellow adults, and here are a ton of babies. You can see some of them are developing the high yellow. I don't know. They're a little bit hard to tell until they get bigger, but in some of them you can see it, so that's pretty cool. There's, there's way more babies in here, too. There's just, they're everywhere, all over the whole enclosure. I move these leaves. They're all down in there. I don't know if you can see very well, but there's a ton of them in there. So finally they're breeding for me like I wanted them to. I had to get a lot of cool things going on. Let's see. What is Dr. Spud says, this is an ice pod related, but in your opinion was the best live fish food. I don't know. I guess it depends on the purpose of the live fish food. Okay, time to break out the Montenegro isopods. 
Armadillidium guy. I'm going to do that right now. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Hit that camera. Um, here we go. These are fun. Just got watered this afternoon. Here's a few from the piece of wood. Look at those colors. They're just fantastic. I love those colors. Hey, Mark's in the house. And, but um, Dr. Spud, one of my favorites, personal favorites is Daphnia. And another favorite is microworms, just personally. But that's because I do a lot of things that require those applications. Those foods work well for what I want to do. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're the best for everybody. But for me, um, I think they're, they're among my favorites. So, let's see. Um, let's see. And... Half a Lord says terrariums are really good for keeping wood lice, but you got to make sure they don't eat all the plants. Um, oh yeah, Serpent Design. I, I know his stuff. I've watched some of his videos. Um, yeah, you have to be careful. It depends on the species. It depends on the situation. Some are more likely to get eaten than others. Oh, I want to show you my dairy cows. Here we go. The dairy cows, they've been having a lot of uh, babies. So let's check it out. This is a pretty new enclosure. Just set it up a while ago. You can see a few babies running around. There's a couple of adults too. I love these. The pattern is so much cleaner than it is on, um, for example, uh, the Dalmatian scabber. They just, you've got a cleaner, more vivid pattern. They tend to get more modeling. A lot of the uh, Dalmatians are pretty weak as far as the modeling goes, so these are amazing. Um, there's a lot more babies in there too. I think uh, they don't usually go on the wet side as much. So let's see what we got over here. Take a look. See if I can show you a few of the babies. There's there's a few down there. You can see. There's a lot more in there than I'm able to show you, unfortunately. But I mean, it's fortunate that they're there. It's just unfortunate it's hard to show them to you. But there we go. Go back to the chat now. Make sure I catch what's going on. Um, let's see. And did I welcome you, Mark? I, I hope I did. I want to make sure to say hi. Mark is a great supporter of the channel. Um, don't want to miss out on anybody if I can help it. Let's see. Um, so I'm going to jump in here. And... Nature Zone says, yeah, the high yellows, mine haven't been breeding. I would love to buy some from you. Yeah, we can make that happen now that I'm finally getting babies. Um, this Let this group grow up a little bit. These are my powder, uh, powder oranges. They're starting to breed. You can see quite a few babies there. So they're doing well. Um, these are one of the fastest breeding species that I've ever had. And I, my powder blues are going nuts, as always. But these are the same species, just a different color. Morph. Speaking of color morphs, let's pick those up. Um, I'm gonna. Here in Canada, you have small bland isopods that eat everything. Pennsylvania angler. What do you do after you get too many isopods in an enclosure? Um, usually, it doesn't happen because I just uh, sell them. <laughs> because I, you know, they they uh, sell really well, and so it's usually a problem of running out of isopods. Uh, I have to just say, oh well, these are off selling. I can't sell these for a while because I need to uh, let them rebuild their populations. That's usually what's going on um, for most species. But if it ever does happen, all I have to do is split the culture into two containers. But Okay, let's take a look at the uh, powder blues, by the way. Here they are. You can see that this is, without me even opening anything up, you can just see them sitting around there um, on top of the Things. And yeah, I do actually watch Serpent Design sometimes. He's got some great stuff. Um, Crystal's Pets, hello. A lot of these powder blues. And Primetime Gecko, any tips on getting your cultures to populate quickly? Um, I would say start with the biggest number you can. Feed them something like Rapache Bug Burger and or fish food for protein. And make sure they have tons of leaves. They never run out. And... Uh, anything else? Oh, there's a ton of them right there, too. Check it out. Uh, let's see, what else would I suggest there? Hmm. 
Mm, that's that's basically it. I mean, the, making sure they get enough food and they get it often, but not too much so it doesn't go moldy. It's really big. Um, and that their substrate is nice and rich and they never run out of leaves. I would say you can get a ton of them to populate pretty quickly that way. And hopefully that helps. Let's see. There's just deer pretending to be isopods. Um, yeah, those are air holes at the top. What I usually do for my isopods that need good ventilation. Not all of them need, I, all of them need some ventilation, but some don't need much. Some need more than others. I get some chiffon, it's really fine fabric that fungus gnats can't get into. And I tape it down with this aluminum tape. Usually put two holes per container. Seems to work really well. I often ventilate the sides too, secondarily, but um, up near the sides, the top of the sides. What is going on? There we go. Got the lid on. Doing okay now. All right. Um, let's see. I want to show you a couple more. I've got my Porcelio Hoffman's Agai coming down, the Titans. These. Or of course my biggest species, one of the biggest species you can get that lives on land. Let's take a look at what's going on. Oh, we've got, is that mating behavior battle? I don't know what's going on there. Here are some Porcelio Hoffman's egg eye. There's a big male right there. There's another one that's not quite full grown, but getting there. I love how you can um, di distinguish male from female so easily just by looking at the, the Europods. It's pretty cool. And the males, of course, get a little bigger. Um, this one looks like it's probably a mostly full-grown female. It's got the short Europods. This one, too. Oh, look, there's one of the orange ones. I'm still not entirely convinced that this is a Hoffman's egg. I think it might be a Spanish orange that got in here somehow, but I'm not sure. There are a couple of them in here. Um, and they're growing pretty fast, but now we'll see what they are as they, uh, as they go. So... Um, half a Lord says, I once heard someone say that they had a pure bright blue isopod culture. Is that true if possible? Um, it may be possible, but often what that is, is, um, an iridovirus that causes the isopods to become that color. And unfortunately it is really bad for them and they eventually die off. I have heard of it though. Um, people, um, culturing them for a while and sometimes they'll last a few generations but the iridovirus seems to get them in the end so um, I'm you know all for hoping that someday we'll get a bright blue culture going of something that's not iridovirus but you know they did it with neocaridina shrimp maybe they'll do it with isopods eventually oh thank you Mark he says hit that like button folks show the love and we've got 12 likes so far so I'd love to see some more that would be awesome so Stephen homeless truth seeker says how much do you sell them for um, if you mean the Hoffman's egg eye, they're about 10 bucks each. I paid 12 bucks each when I originally got them, but uh, they're about 10 bucks each, and they will uh, probably be going down eventually. They do, you know, eventually go down in prices. More people are breeding them, but it depends on the species. Some species are like uh, 25 for five dollars, so um, and there are other ones that are, you know, in between. A lot of them are about a dollar each, just depending on the type. Crystal's Pets, do you buy your leaf or do you bake them for the pill bugs? I bake them. And I I pay my son to bake them now, nowadays, too. Um, he works for me for, you know, a few hours a week, taking care of, helping me take care of all the critters. And so he, one of his jobs is to bake leaves. We got some, some baking pens, especially for the leaves and substrate, because I'm always, you know, in need of more. And every week he bakes a batch up. Um, primetime geckos. The Titans are one of my favorites. Um, me too. I, they're, they're one of my favorites as well. They're so big and they're so cool looking. I love their long antennae and their Europods. They're just, they're just cool. Um, everything created says, Hey Russ, off topic. Sorry, love, but I think my morning gecko may have eggs or I've already laid them. She's been hiding a lot and I noticed she was extra chubby, but is now a bit thinner. Ah, uh, could very well be. I hope so. I hope your morning gecko is going to, um, give you some baby geckos soon. That would be super cool. So uh, that's one of the, yep, there's one of the oranges right there. Whether or not it's a Hoffman's egg eye remains to be seen, but it is an orange isopod indeed. And I didn't put it there. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I would say that it's likely that she has laid 
a couple of eggs and especially if you can take a look at her belly if you've seen the white eggs through her belly as she's up against the glass and now you don't you're, it's a pretty good bet also you can tell by the in, endolymphatic sacs kind of in the cheek area if they were big and white and full of calcium and then they kind of decreased or disappeared then that usually means they used a lot of uh, calcium to produce uh, the eggs and then um, you know used it up how do you find the eggs? I've looked everywhere. Well, they usually laid high up in the enclosure, but that's not 100% uh, you know, the case. Uh, but generally high up in the corners of the enclosure, but they'll hide them behind bark. They'll hide them in any kind of crevice. I've had them dig under pieces of wood and lay them underneath a piece of wood, and they had to dig to get there. So you know, sometimes they'll do that. And in one of my enclosures the other day, I found a baby. I didn't know they had laid any eggs yet in this enclosure because I had switched them over to that enclosure you know, not so long ago, and I was thinking they were taking a break because it was cold. And then I found a baby in there, and then I realized they're laying eggs inside a cork bark tube that is bolted to the back of the enclosure. I can't take it off, and it's kind of leaning a little bit away from the enclosure. There's a little gap that must be where they're laying. Um, some eggs asks if this species takes long to mature. Yeah, I would say it takes longer than a lot of the smaller species to mature, yeah. It does, but not, not super long time. Crystal's pet said, that's cool, I'll do the same when I order my pill bugs. Cool. Asylum JK, how can I buy some of your isopods if they are for sale, that is? You certainly can, as long as you're in the continental U.S. Um, you just contact me via my, um, my About page, my YouTube About tab. You just go there. There's an email you can, I can't say it because then the bots will get me and I'll be in trouble. But um, Meaning just... Uh, They'll steal my email address and, and send me random stuff, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I don't want them to get my email address that way. But you can get it, and you can get it by going to um, my About page, and it'll ask you to put some the CAPTCHA characters in, and it'll give you my email, and you can send me an email, and I'll send you a price list. So that's how that works. Um, spiffy Pictures. Hey, what if... What do you do if you have some escapees? Well, that's pretty rare with isopods in my experience. I have had a few like powder blues or whatnot um, occasionally escape, and I'm not sure how that happened. But it happens very rarely, and occasionally I find them wandering around. But uh, nothing really to worry about. They're not going to infest the house or anything like that. It's usually too dry for them to survive very long, so it's un unlikely to be an issue for, uh, for long term. Very unlikely indeed, which is good. But I, I generally don't. Uh, most of the containers are good, and I just make sure that I don't have, say, um, you know, if you have a leaf that's, so you know what I mean, like sticking up out so that a whole bunch of leaves or, or a stick or something like that is sticking out the edge of the enclosure, kind of like this, you know, they have a bridge. They can sometimes, the small ones can sneak out. But uh, if I make sure to avoid that, then usually fine. So... All right, primetime gecko, 60 grams good for an adult male leopard gecko. Well, oh, that seems like a pretty good weight to me, but I'm not sure because uh, offhand I don't even really know what a good weight for a for a adult leopard gecko is. I have just, we weighed our snake recently, and he was, he's a young corn snake, of course. He's only about a year and a half old, and he weighed 94 grams, and he's a little bit, small for his age because he was being underfed a little bit so we're fattening him back up and he's gaining about eight to ten grams a month which is good but i'm not sure for a leopard gecko good question um and eddie in panic said hey i've been getting i've been thinking about getting into keeping isopods but we would recommend as a good starter species well i would say um any of the smaller porcelios are good if you, and it depends on what you want to do. If you want to do one for a hobby species, I would say try something like um, Armadillidium vulgare uh, orange vigor or maybe Armadillidium vulgare uh, nasatum peach. Those are good ones. Or the zebras are a good one, the Armadillidium maculatum. Or any Porcelio scabromorph is good. Those are great ones to start with. If you want something that will produce like crazy, uh, you can get the, the powder blues or the powder oranges or the whiteout of that species of Porcelionides prunosus, or you can get some Porcelio lavis. That's another great hardy species. So those are some good ones to start with. 
Do you have any giant isopods you walk around with a tiny leash? Not yet, but I'm working on it. If I can manage to get a giant terrestrial isopod that, that, that is that big, I will do it because it sounds super cool. Let's see. Let's take a look at another species. This, the titans have been here for a while, but maybe we need to look at something else, huh? What do you think? Any requests? If you remember what I've got. Um, I would like to take a look at the Oniscus ocellus while I'm here. These are cool. And, okay. We're going to look at the Oniscus ocellus in just a second. The skirted isopods, but I want to catch up with the chat also. Ah, 401 Movie says, Hello, Russ. Can we see an update of your beautiful enclosure you made a time ago from Morning Gecko? Sure. The latest one is in my 15,000 subscriber video. So that's been, you know, a month or so, a month or two, I'm not sure. Let's, let's flip this over. And you can see um, that the enclosure I made, but I need to do like a feeding video or something and just kind of show off that enclosure. Um, so yeah, that's a good idea. I'll try to do that sometime soon. Maybe first feeding Friday next month or something. Could do. Um, notice that there are some Porcelio scabber in here, like this one. I need to get those out. I swear, I come in here and pull out these Porcelio scabbers every time and put them in my Porcelio scabber bin and then there are always more of them and it's kind of silly. Look at this one. That has a cool patterning on it. Can you see that? That looks really cool. It's got a lot more of the patterning than most of them do. That is pretty neat. I'm excited about that. There's a, there's a scabber right there. I'm going to grab it if I can. It's trying to hold on there. I got two of them. Is that a scabber too? No, that's an ocellus. That's an oniscus ocellus. Well, I got two of the scabbers and I'm going to put those away. And you, Oh, look, that one has similar markings with the, the kind of gold flex on it as the other. Uh, okay, just a second. I'm going to the other side of the room. My long microphone cord. And going to um, catch up with chat if I can. Okay, let's see where are we. Primetime Gecko said, I haven't seen my leopard gecko poop, but I have like eight superworm beetles. Should I be worried? Well, are you seeing any of the urates or the white part? If you're not seeing any of that, could potentially be an issue. I mean, not necessarily. I've noticed with uh, mealworms, there's, they don't really leave a lot of urates. Um, so, uh, you know, the leopard geckos leave the urates. But what I'm saying is if you keep the mealworms in there, they seem to actually eat the urates. To, in my experience, that's what I'm attributing it to. I'm not sure. But I don't see as much urates as I did when I didn't have mealworms in there. So that's, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, I do see them, but just not as much. But if you're not seeing any waste at all, it could be something you want to keep an eye on then. Um, Critter Girl says, my zebra isopods seem to not be reproducing. have had them since September. Any tips? Let's see. September? Well, you know, when I first got mine... It took mine several months. I don't know how old yours are, but usually when they're sold, they're usually old enough to reproduce because they can reproduce at about a third of their adult uh, maximum size. So it's likely that they're big enough. Do you have um, good ventilation for them? Like the lids that I was showing a minute ago? If you have like the um, this kind of lid, something going on with that with some screen in there, fine screen that keeps fungus gnats from going through it, but allows lots of uh, air exchange. The ventilation will help. You don't want to keep it too moist. Um, and you want to put some more food in. Maybe if they're, um, if you're just using leaves and stuff, maybe a little bit of supplemental food like some bug burger could help. Um, but let me know what your setup's like and maybe I can give you some better info. Pocosaurus, favorite Jurassic Park movie? Probably the first one. I mean, I like the Jurassic World ones too, but the first one was just so groundbreaking. Oh, there's another Porcelio scabber. Can I get it? No, it's going in the hole. Too bad. Okay. Plant-based experience says, weirdly enough, right now my isopod home is mold like the day after putting a minute amount of food in there. Okay. Yeah, that can happen. The humidity in there, and depending on the ventilation, especially if the ventilation is low, and if you don't have springtails, even if you do, it can happen. There's another Porcelio scabber I'm going to pull out and put in the other enclosure. Just a second. Why don't I pull out the Dalmatians? Let's take a look at the Dalmatians here. I'm going to close this one up. 
and you should see the floor. It's just covered in isopod containers here. Isopod enclosures everywhere. Mike Ty Titula, wow, I've seen some of your videos, but I didn't know that you um, had watched any of mine. That's cool. That's awesome. Um, welcome. Glad to see you here. Half Lord says, oh, I have to go. Well, maybe I'll do a video on those tiny Brazilian isopods. That would be cool. Yeah. Keep up the isopod tips. I need to be prepared. Cool. I will. Um, Plant-based experience. I think it means to make better ventilation. I need some spring towels. Yep. Those two things can really help with mold for sure. So try that out and let me know what happens. Um, and let's see. Primetime Gecko. I have some native isopods that look like calico. I was very excited about them. Cool. Yeah, I caught some uh, last spring and brought some home. And now several generations later, I've got another line of calicos going too. So yeah, I hope they do well for you. That's awesome. And um, oh, you've been subbed for quite a while. That's cool. That's, that's really cool. I'm flattered. Thanks for joining in today. And Supernova Betty says, I love isopods. So do I. You notice um, these are the... Uh-oh, did we freeze? Oh, I hope you can hear my voice because it looks like my image is frozen. Um, let's see. Roberto Barrera says, how long did it take for your Montenegros to start breeding? Um, it took... Now I can't even remember, honestly. I think it was a fair while, though. It seemed like longer than I would ex have expected, but I can't remember. Okay, I'm sorry it's frozen, but I'm glad you're hearing me. Thanks, Pocosaurus. Crystal Pet says, I love isopods, too. We've got a lot of isopod lovers here, and I love it. I'm glad. Um, and thanks, Crystal. I'm glad that you guys can hear me. I'm sorry that the image is frozen. That's crummy. Uh, but I could be doing anything now. I could be showing you my ham sandwich instead of isopods. You wouldn't even know. That's that's no fun. Oh, Mike Kinseth is in the house too. Cool. And welcome. Nice to have you back. Let's take a look at... Let's see. How about the orange Dalmatians? It's been a while since I've uh, shown any of these on the screen, I think. Not all of these are orange. I'm still kind of calling these out. Oh, you know what? You probably can't even see these. What am I thinking? Yeah, you can't see that one right there. So we'll just forget the image for right now, and I'll just pay attention to the chat. Um, Critter Girl says, I have lots of ventilation, but will add more. I've been supplementing with Repashi morning wood in powder form and other foods once a week or so. Okay. So they eat the powder? Are they doing fine with that? I've heard people say that they're okay with the powder. I always make a you know, mix it up, but I'm wondering. No, I haven't used Rapashi morning wood yet. I've been meaning to try that one. Um, there's a place I can get it locally that, uh, with free shipping and everything, so I want to try it. But um, I always use Rapashi bug burger. Love that stuff. So if they eat, your they eat the powder directly for you, cool. I might need to try that because then my son would probably be happy that he just needs to dump it in the enclosures instead of uh, mixing it up first. So does everybody just still see the image of the frozen Dalmatian isopods? Is that what everybody's seeing? Hmm, how sad. Well, I'm, I've got some uh, plans coming up. Okay, everybody's saying it's frozen. That's too bad. Thank you for letting me know. I guess it's about time to cut out in just a minute here. So if you haven't clicked the like button, um, then please do it so that YouTube will show more people my videos and get to see more people. Oh, I see people are clicking the like button. That's not frozen on the screen. Cool. So thank you for doing that. I would restart if I weren't so close to the end, but I'm so close I've got to go. And um, But thanks for joining in. I've got a couple of things uh, in the works with some new isopod species I'm going to be trying to get soon, doing a trade. And thanks everyone for joining. And yes, I'm glad you caught me live, Mike, and uh, once again, that's really cool that you're watching my channel. I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, Critter Girl says, my ISOs and Millies like it in powder. Got a larger container from Josh's Frogs. Free shipping. Cool. Well, I'm going to give it a go with the uh, Bug Burger then and see how they like it. Thanks for joining in, everyone, and 
be watching for the next video that's coming up on Friday. It's going to be millipede based, based on some requests people have had for